Hello, hello everyone. It's Alice of KHR Arts and today we are going to do a vlog about a day in the life. So this is a vlog detailing what exactly a typical day looks like for me. And just FYI, this is a day that is specifically centered around my KHR arts, gaming, YouTube video editing sort of stuff. A day where I focus on my author work with writing and editing looks much different than this. So take it with that in mind. On this particular day, I had to wake up at 5.30 a.m. It was pretty rough, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. But thankfully we have Squishy who just makes everything better because he is so adorable and majestic and we love him. <laughs> he does sleep in bed with me, always curled up really close to me. He's just a total snuggle bug and he always helps me greet the day. He's always very excited for waking up, getting the day started, and of course food time. He's just such a cute little baby. I love him so much and he purrs so loud. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I always get my day started with coffee. I mean, who doesn't get the day started with coffee? It's my lifeblood, it's what I need, and especially with the fact that I am only allowed to have one cup of coffee a day due to doctor's orders with my heart condition, I make that one cup count. But I get my day started with getting the Keurig fired up, getting all of my stuff together out of the bedroom, and just generally kind of waking up and <laughs> figuring out what I'm supposed to do. Before I even get out of bed, I actually usually sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, reading through my emails, checking messages, checking my social media feeds just to see what I have going on for the day, what's going on in the world, see if anybody messaged me with anything urgent, decide on what I'm going to work on for that day, all that sort of stuff. And then I get up and I get my work area sorted out, get everything all nice and put together. And one of the important parts of my morning routine is I do enjoy lighting candles just to give that little ambiance. I like having particular scents for particular times of the year since it's fall. I have a lot of pumpkin, pumpkin spice, cinnamon, apple, all that kind of sweet spice fall sort of scents going on just really makes my morning getting all of that together and I do have to tie my hair back uh, in order to do what I like to call my morning chores just because my hair is pretty long and it's really good at getting in the way and it just helps keep it out of my face and honestly just keep it out of everything and after morning abolitions it's time to feed the squish sometimes he needs a little bit more coaxing than others but he eventually gets up and he uses his little kitty stairs in order to help get him going. And a big part of that is he is actually capable of jumping up and down from the bed. The only thing is, is that it's really hard on his joints. So that's why we have him use little kitty stairs. It's just easier for his little kitty joints, keeping his health top of mind, all that good stuff. Part of food time for Squish is using his feeder mice and what they are is they are these little plastic mice with washable fabric covers that I can take off and throw in the washing machine and I fill them with three-fourths of a cup of food each morning he only gets fed once a day 
and he gets fed blue buffalo diet cat food. He's been on this diet since as long as I can remember y'all. I mean, pretty much most of his life. And we use the mouse feeders because it helps him to slow down so that he's not just gobbling up his food, as well as it gives him play. It helps him problem solve, use his little noggin to have to get the food out of the mouse feeders, all that good stuff. So it gives him something to do and he really enjoys it. And he honestly just likes the entire process of food time. He just likes hanging out with me, watching me do things. I mean, he just is such a great little companion, y'all. He is just here for doing whatever it is that I'm doing. He's honestly a lot more low maintenance than most people realize, even with his health condition, having acromegaly, which is gigantism meaning that he is a literal giant. He is 35 pounds. He is the size of a corgi dog. And just for reference, most cats on average are supposed to be about 12 to 15 pounds. So he is literally giant. He's a very big boy. And I do everything that I can to keep him healthy. But honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a whole lot, y'all. Honestly, Lady was far more high maintenance, required so much more than Squishy ever has. I mean, that could easily change, especially with him being nine years old. He is technically officially a senior cat. Uh, once he turns 10, he'll be considered elderly, so he could develop some health problems along the road, knock on wood, that he doesn't but he definitely does not require intensive care the way that Lady did. After I feed Squishy, I do my morning toilet, which is just all of the typical particulars, flossing, brushing my teeth, all that fun stuff. After my morning toilet is when I finally get to have my coffee. Oh, honestly, y'all, it's one of the best parts of my day. I'm not gonna lie. I love my coffee so, so much. It's a whole process for me. And because environmentalism is an important topic for me, I do my best to incorporate it in my daily life as it makes sense. Obviously, I am constrained by location, by my lifestyle, and most importantly, by my finances. But I do what I can, where I can, and one of the big items that I do in order to further my environmentalism agenda is that even though I have a Keurig, I don't use K-cups because they contribute a ton of plastic waste. So instead, I use these reusable K-cups. They are plastic with metal mesh and they are washable. So I can wash them in the sink or I can wash them in the dishwasher and I can reuse them until basically they break, which it takes years, literal years for them to break. So they're really, really great. I highly recommend them. I also buy my ground coffee in larger bags and then I dump out the bag into a mason jar just so that it stays fresher for longer. And so by doing this, I save a ton of money every month compared to what I would pay for disposable K-cups and it creates a lot less waste doing this sort of process. Honestly, taking it a step further, if I had access to one of those types of grocery stores where you bring in your own containers for bulk foods, if I could do that with coffee, that would be absolutely incredible. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have a place like that nearby. So I just get bagged coffee from the grocery store and just do that instead. While the Keurig is going, because it does take a minute or two for the coffee to brew, I do take that extra couple of minutes to make my bed. Of course, I'm not like one of those people that does the military way of making your bed where you can bounce a quarter off of it. I am not that extreme, y'all. Pretty much I'm just like, all right, are, are the covers straight? Are the pillows? on the bed great <laughs> that's the bare minimum for me and the main reason why i make my bed every morning it has nothing to do with any of those like motivational speaker people that are like oh if you like start your day making your bed you've already done one thing blah 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 i mean by this time i've already done several things to start my morning 
It's more so that I found over the years that if I make my bed every morning, that it makes it easier with just the whole sleeping process and that my covers tend to stay where they're supposed to go. They don't turn into a big tangled mess on my bed. And so it's just for very practical reasons. I don't really have a more exciting reason than that. And of course, once my coffee is done, I take it upstairs so that I can doctor it up with a little bit of coffee creamer. And again, because it is fall, it is pumpkin spice season, and I love pumpkin spice, y'all. I really, truly do. I just, it for me, it just says fall. I just love the flavor, the spices. It's just so cozy and homey and just everything indicative of fall. So put a splash of that in my coffee so that I can start my day, get rid of the coffee grounds, and of course just dump that bad boy in the dishwasher and there's just as little waste as possible involved in this whole process and it just really makes me happy. After I get my coffee all squared away, then I go back upstairs and I get my water bottle squared away. Again, this is a part of my less waste, less plastic environmentalism journey. I use this water bottle constantly. I carry it around everywhere with me. You've probably seen me drinking out of this during my live streams. I also always take it with me to events and conventions. It's just so much more convenient to be able to just fill it up on the go, not having to worry about purchasing a water bottle or having any sort of waste that comes with that. And back when I lived in my Chicago apartment, and of course I did not have access to the bougie water that my parents prefer to have at our house, I just had a Brita filter that I installed on the kitchen sink and I would drink the water just directly from the filter from the kitchen sink. So I don't have to be that bougie, it's just the environment that I'm currently living in and I am not complaining y'all. Ready to get the day started, baby. And once I'm done with my water and I've come back downstairs, I gotta say hi to the squish. I interact with him all throughout the day and that's a big part of why I love working remotely and why I love doing all of my freelance work from home is that I get to spend basically all day with him and he loves it too. After I say hello to the squish, I sit down at my workstation where I have my whole rig set up. I've got my laptop and my monitor, my work laptop. I just, I have so much stuff going on y'all. So I sit down and I take a minute to get everything fired up, get everything logged in and see if either computer needs to do any updates or needs to do any sort of restart or anything like that so that that can process while I'm getting dressed. After I've settled everything with the computers, then I go back into my room and I pick an outfit for the day. And 
It's funny because I actually have four closets and each of my closets is organized with a different set of clothes. So the one that you see here is my general daily wear. And I am an elder goth, y'all. And what that means is that I was absolutely a goth kid in high school and I just never grew out of that. Uh, if you see me out and about, I'm usually wearing all black, as you can see here. And that particular closet is all of my everyday black clothes that I pretty much wear all the time. And then after I get my clothes together, I do all of my lotions and potions. I do suffer from eczema, so lotion is a very important part of my skincare routine. And after I get dressed, get everything together, then I take my hair down from my ponytail because it's usually a lot messier than this since I'm just kind of blundering around in the morning. I don't really care what I look like. So then I take my hair down and I redo my ponytail so that I can look presentable, especially because I'm going to be doing corporate work and corporate meetings and I have to look like a human being for that kind of stuff. So I take a few minutes to just kind of brush my hair, make it more presentable, fix my bangs, all that good stuff. And then finally I sit down at my computers and this is when I sit down for real where I actually get started, get all of my internet tabs open, just get everything all started and do what I like to call my morning work, which is the work that I do every day, how I start my day, going through emails, going through all of my social media postings and doing all of my social media engagements, just all that good stuff, seven days a week. And of course I get whatever project I'm going to work on for the day keyed up, get all of that open so that I know what I'm doing. And then of course I have a running Google document, which is my master to-do list, where I keep track of all of my daily tasks and all of my larger projects so that I can then decide what I'm going to do for that particular day, kind of put it all in order so that I can have kind of a rough outline of a schedule. It's very task-based rather than time-based.
then I get my green screen set up and this is so that I can do my morning corporate meeting. We got to say hi to the squish again. He loves being a part of my live streams. He loves being a part of my meetings. He likes to scream during my meetings. He's just such a ham, y'all. It is just all about him, let me tell you. So I do have a separate pair of headphones that I use specifically for my corporate meetings and that's just so that I can look more professional with the black razor headphones as opposed to my pink kitty kraken headphones and a big part of how I keep myself in shape is I now have this amazing pedaler it's kind of like a mini exercise bike that is under my desk and I use it all throughout the day. So basically constantly while I'm working. And then I get started with my corporate Zoom meetings, get into my emails, do all of my corporate work that I am required to do each day. And how it works is that I am currently a contractor, so I am only paid for the hours that I work. And it's pretty much I work whenever I have work to do. So whenever I have meetings scheduled that I have to be a part of, whenever I have actual tasks that I have to complete, that's when I'm blocking my time and actually working on stuff. And so that's also how I'm able to fit so much of my day is that I'm able to work on my own tasks and work on my own projects during the time that I don't have meetings or that I don't have a task or a project to work on for my corporate job. So that's why I flip back and forth between my corporate laptop and my personal rig constantly throughout the day, as well as I do have my corporate laptop open basically from when I wake up until about six o'clock each night, just so that if somebody needs to send me an email or there's something that comes through, a last minute task or a meeting gets changed, I know about it immediately and I can just switch back over. Typically, I water my plants earlier in the morning, but on this particular day, I had a really early 7.30 a.m. meeting, so I had to wait until my morning meetings were over in order to do this task. But I really enjoy my little bamboo plants and my little basil plants. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have the ability to have a garden currently, so this is kind of like my little substitute mini garden but it is one of my goals that when I finally have my own place I really want to have a garden it's something that I really enjoy doing I'm not exactly a person who's very talented at gardening uh, pretty much if I can keep the plants alive that's a win in my book but it is something that I really enjoy and it is one of those things that does help me to remember that you don't have to be an absolute expert at something in order to enjoy it. You can be, you know, just at the baseline of being able to do a thing in order to get enjoyment out of it, and that's kind of me and gardening. And this is another one of the tasks that I just squeeze into my day whenever it makes sense with the schedule that I have going on, which is that I do some little exercises, I do squats, and I have some hand weights that I use for arm exercises. And a lot of this is to just help keep me in shape, help to keep my flexibility and my muscles strong and to help me to just keep moving as well as to help me to hopefully lose some of the weight that I gained due to all of my medication changes. 
after that because on this particular day it was Monday and on Mondays I wash Squishy's water bowls just to make sure that he's staying healthy and that he doesn't have any sort of grossness going on with his water. Obviously if his water is gross in the middle of the week I'll wash it again. And I check on his water dishes all throughout the day, make sure that the water levels are good, make sure that he has plenty of water, because that is something that a lot of people don't realize about having a cat, is that they require a lot of water, especially male cats, that a big cause for urinary tract infections, and especially with male cats, urinary tract crystals, is that your cat is not getting the proper hydration that they need. So always make sure that your cat has plenty of clean water. That is one of the best and easiest ways to keep them healthy and prevent any sort of UTIs from developing. Once all of my morning work is complete, that's when I select a task or a project that I'm going to work on for the day. On this particular day, I was working on editing one of the videos for my YouTube channel, where it's basically one of my live streams for my Twitch channel, and I edit it down so that it's all of the highlights and the pog moments. It actually takes quite a bit of time to edit and render and upload all of these videos compared to actually doing the live streams themselves. I mean, the whole process takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, both doing the live stream and then doing the YouTube video edits, but all of it is definitely worth it, and I love sharing all of these fun moments with y'all, and I hope that y'all enjoy them too. And again, hitting those milestones, they just help with the gamification of keeping my fitness up, keeping me moving, all that good stuff. What are you doing? You being a people? Yeah. I also make sure that I get up from my desk and move around throughout the day. And one of my favorite ways to motivate myself to get up from my desk and step Thank away from my people. work for a few minutes is of course to get up and say hi to Squishy and pet him and he enjoys it too. <laughs> getting up and walking around and getting away from my desk for a few minutes is of course refilling my water. I want to say I probably refill it anywhere from three to five times a day. If you haven't had a glass of water today, this is your prompt to go get a glass of water. Be hydrated, y'all. We're basically all just house plans with depression. And on this particular day, I had the treat of getting Taco Bell, which was really helpful because I had a lot of morning meetings and then I had a few afternoon meetings as well. So not having to take the extra time to cook lunch and to just have carry out food instead was really awesome. And of course it's important to remember to only have takeout food in moderation. Normally when I have lunch, 
I'm cooking something, it's typically rice and fish and veggies. That makes up the bulk of my diet, so this is definitely not an everyday thing. What's the matter? You're having a scream. You're having a scream. Is mama not paying attention to you? <laughs> okay. on, got on, back onto my corporate laptop, and got back to work with that. And I was really excited that while doing more of my afternoon corporate work, I hit that milestone. I, I got that 20 minimum, so that made me really excited that I hit it so early on in the day. But also, part of it is being conscientious of how much I'm exerting myself in a day, and I can't it due to my fibromyalgia and my hip problems that if I do overdo it then I'm probably going to be fairly immobile the following day. So my mobility issues are pretty dependent on how much stress I put on my body. Now it's not an everyday thing but it is certainly a frequent thing is that I will sometimes take an afternoon nap and this is typically only an hour long if I can help it if I'm having a really bad fibromyalgia day. Usually those naps will turn into me just flat out passing out, but of course I also have to make sure that if I have a meeting later in the day that I get back up for that, but sometimes I will get up for a meeting and then do whatever work that I have to do and then go straight back to bed, which those days really suck because I don't get as much done as I would like. On this particular day, I was feeling pretty energized after that nap, so it really did the trick. I was able to get a lot more work done, hit another milestone with my peddlers, so I was really proud of that. And then as always at about six o'clock is when I shut down my work laptop for the day. Now obviously if there was a later meeting scheduled or if there was a big project I would have to work on, I would stay online and do the work for that. But on a typical business as usual day, I shut down at six o'clock. On this particular evening, I ate dinner at my desk. I don't normally do that, but on this particular night I had rehearsal for the Goddess Festival. So I ended up having a later night than I usually would and I don't usually take a shower this late at night. And then I just kind of hung out a bit and closed everything down and wound down and got to bed at about 11 o'clock. I hope you all liked this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're new, subscribe. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.